But anyway, let's go ahead and get down to business. Uh, there has been an unprecedented event here, guys. ArenaNet has actually released a hotfix to the May 11th balance patch preview. Now, before we even talk about this, I want to talk about how remarkable this actually is. ArenaNet doesn't do this. Typically, the actual difference between updating things, right, is a long, long time. Let me put it like that. And on top of that, um, usually they don't ever do something. They don't like hotfix stuff. They don't like change it before it actually releases. This is a really big moment. Okay, and this is a massive thing and a massive step up in the way Arena is developing their game and balancing their game. Listening to the feedback that they received on that patch and then changing it within days is amazing. Right, okay, this is exactly what I want to see from ArenaNet going forwards into the future. So right off the bat, great job here. And as you'll see, the changes are actually very solid as well. So let's go ahead and get into that. So Last week, we posted a preview of the May 11th balance, uh, skills and balance update, and have since been keeping a close eye on the discussions and memes regarding the planned changes. Now that we've had time to read and discuss your feedback, we want to share some of our observations and the changes we're making as a result. This goes without saying, but we truly do appreciate the feedback and your passion for the game. Most notably, we've seen concerns that Firebrand will ne negatively impact group composition diversity, especially in Fractals. We've also observed that Condition Firebrand is an outlier as a condition build with the ability to deal burst damage nearly as fast as a power build, largely due to the current functionality of Ashes of the Just, which would lead to it double dipping from the changes to the exposed boss debuff. Finally, there have been some good questions about how the Firebrand trait weighty terms will function with mantras, because yes, guys, right, having no telegraph immobilize probably not a very good idea, guys. I wouldn't say that's very balanced and very fun and interactive. And also, you know, the entire concept of a final charge is gone, right? So they had to kind of like, you know, what's actually going on there? Like, what even is that, right? Ranger's clarion bond and concerned about condition revenant builds outperforming in PvE with the changes to torment. After taking the time to investigate these concerns, we prepared the following changes and clarifications for the May 11th balance update. So, Guardian, Ashes of the Just, now may only activate and consume a stack with an interval of once per second. So, this actually doesn't nerf a Firebrand's individual burst that much, just to be clear. People are looking at this and thinking like this is like a massive slam. This is actually not a massive slam at all. What this nerfs is pre-stacking Ashes, right? Like the ridiculous Ashes pre-stack, that won't work anymore. Or it will work to a far lesser degree. You'll still be able to do it, but it won't be nearly as effective, okay? So to be clear, this is a great change on design. I think eventually... Ashes probably just need, needs to be reworked. I think it will still actually end up being a little bit problematic, but this definitely addresses the whole like pre stacking issue with Ashes because, I mean, right off the bat, guys, right? Like, you know, right off the bat, it should just straight up not be. You shouldn't be able to like pre stack unique buffs, right? Like before you go into a fight, like they should get stripped just like boons. You shouldn't be able to do that, but this is like a good change to actually fix that. But just note here, this is not the end of the universe here for Firebrand. It will actually still be good. Yeah, it punishes stacking Firebrands for sure, uh, but it doesn't make it like bad to do that. Particularly thing is like Tome 1s are going to get desynced anyway. So it's kind of okay, right? Like, it's kind of okay. And if it is a problem that Firebrands are kind of screwing themselves over, they can always, like, increase the duration um, of the of Ashes in PvE. So it, it isn't, it's in much less of an issue, right? So, Chapter 2, Igniting Burst, which is the second skill that gives you uh, burning and weakness in an AoE around you. Burning stacks applied, reduced from 2 to 1, and the base duration is going up from 5 to 10. So note that this is a, just, again, an intelligent change. DPS, or rather, like, overall DPS, identical. Burst, reduced. Great change. Exactly what you want to see. This is exactly what you want. Uh, Firebrand's burst is too high. Yeah, for a Connie build, it should be slower. And now it's going to be slower. And then weighty terms. Now occurs on any mantra used, not only the final charge. Now inflicts slow instead of immobilize. And in my opinion, this is the huge downside, right, of making mantras um, very, very dumbed down, like for Firebrand. And, and Mesma has similar things, but this is the thing for Firebrand. So now this is way less counterplayable. Right, because you can't really tell when it's going to proc, or like when it they, when they might be able to use that. It is way less usable because you, the player, can't really control it as much because you have an ICD on it there as well. Um, and right, they had to you know they they had to like essentially nerf it really hard because it would be you know really really disgusting um, if you have. Uh, you know if you have immobilized proccing like all over the place on mantra, not good, right? Not great. 
and then Stoic Demeanor, now also procs on Inflicting Slow. Um, th this is, I am not a big fan of this, okay? Um, basically, this means that weighty terms will proc this trait. I don't like traits proccing other traits as a rule. Now, this trait kind of sucks, so it's not really the end of the world there, but I don't like this idea that traits can activate other traits. I think traits should activate a specific part of your build. Um, they can synergize together, right? And like certain traits can make, you know, they can all come together in like a glorious union, but I don't think they should activate each other, which um, don't, I'm not really a really big fan of that. But this trait could honestly use a rework. I would say that Stoic Demeanor probably needs like a full-on rework actually, because it's, it's, it saw some niche play when Firebrand was good in PvP, like the Menders build um, played this trait, but yeah, you, you don't do that now. And in general, this is probably one of the most underplayed traits in the game. So I'd actually like to see a rework to this trait. Moving on to Revenant here. Corruption. Invoke Torment. Uh, wow, and this is like straight up nerfs here, guys. So um, they nerfed like Rev a fair bit to kind of comp to compensate for the Torment changes, essentially. So Invoke Torment, Torment's like down from 2 to 1. And also the Poison and Burning are down to 2 to 1 there as well. If you have Diabolic Inferno, which is the Grandmaster DPS trait in Corruption, essentially, is what that is. And wow, I... Like, bear in mind, guys, like, um, basically, legend swapping is actually, like, a lot of damage for Rev, because you get a lot of very high duration coins. It was, like, six stacks of coins, basically, two torment, two poison, two burn, right, all in one proc. That was a very strong effect to the point where, like, legend swapping is, like, a really, really key part. Like, legend swapping a lot is a key part of the rotation. It always has been, because of the way Rev works with, um, sigils, and it can proc sigils, right, off, um, legend swapping, too. So that's always a really key thing to do on Rev. But, yeah, this is a great change. I mean, like, you know, they're, they're addressing, they're trying to tone it down a little bit there as well. And oh, obviously, it doesn't really matter that much. It's, they're just reducing the damage. I think this is a good way to do it, though. A good way to reduce the damage, for sure. And there we go. Mace. Anguish Swipe. Reduce the Torment duration from 5 seconds to 3 seconds in PvE. And also on Misery Swipe as well. This is basically the auto attacks. The auto attack chain, basically, um, is down from 5 to 3. That's a significant nerf as well. That's actually... They're slashing that by uh, 40%, right? Essentially, then that's going to be, you know, 10 seconds. is going to go down to 6 seconds there. And... Rev is still going to be very, very strong. Like, don't get me wrong, guys. This is going to be a very, very powerful effect. Um, and going to have a lot of damage nonetheless. But this will certainly prevent it from, like, going up into, like, the stratosphere, right? Like, this is going to keep from being too crazy. Now, bear in mind, you might see a very high benchmark for Renegade. In a way, that's actually okay. Because, um, Condi builds should bench higher than power because they don't have the ability to burst in the same way. So as long as colony builds are slow enough to ramp up, then it's absolutely fine to have a very, very high ending benchmark number because otherwise it's just strictly worse than a power build. Bear in mind, guys, power damage is better than condi damage, right? Because it is instant versus not instant. Instant is always better uh, in these situations. There are a few. There are like a few niche situations where Condi does actually win out, but um, certainly in PVE, power damage is almost always better. And where Condi ends up being good a lot of the time is actually because of confusion, which is basically power damage. So there you go. And actually, a bit of like a, you know, like, you know, this will no longer be a suicide button. So pain absorption is basically like you suck in condies from your allies and gain resistance. Well, resistance no longer actually prevents you from damaging conditions, just from the debilitating ones. So they're going to compensate for that and giving it some resolution. This is a great change, and I would really hope to see more sweeping changes that I would, I would love to see, like, fresh air Ellie get resolution so it can't be snared. Like, you know, you're free, free as air, right? Like, when you're um, in there, I want to see re uh, resolution being applied to other things or like maybe earth on tempest for example get some resolution um you could have uh you know you could have uh, i don't know like you know ellie could get some of that stuff there as well like we already said there guys you could get some of that stuff on maybe rev could have some resolution because it typically does struggle a little bit with condi although maybe that's that's where madness lies in that direction maybe in stuff like necro could get resolution right like there's a lot of things you could do there um you know mesmer could get resolution in in pvp to help it survive a little bit better right and and it could give resistance right like there are now there's a lot more design space with regards to resistance because of the changes here that allow arena net to be a lot more spicy with what they do and really share these boons out which is definitely a great thing indeed and this is just a nice little change there it's still gonna be a pretty scary um it's still a pretty scary thing to be honest um to uh <laughs> to press that button because it doesn't make you take prevent taking all damage um 
but it does prevent some of it. And, and this sort of thing, by the way, guys, is exactly how, um, is exactly why the resolution change was so good. It just frees up so much design space, and now we can see these boons, these powerful effects, and weaknesses of certain professions compensated for uh, by this boon, as opposed to deleting them. The issue with resistance, guys, um, is that, but well, previously, it was, it was so polarizing, right? It would like, it wouldn't make you just immune to a bit, it would make you immune to all combis, which was a, an effect so powerful that only a very few builds could even be allowed to be anywhere near that, right? Because if other builds had that, it would be crazy. Easy. With this though, with this design philosophy, Arena has much more flexibility on applying these boons and gently tweaking weaknesses and strengths and builds as opposed to just annihilating them one way or another. So great change here again by Arena. And yes, this will be rolled out to stuff like Signet of Renewal, the uh, basically kind of ranger equivalent of this ability where you like absorb in. Uh, you know, all the colonies to the pet, and the pet gains resistance, and you gain resistance. Don't worry about that, okay? That will definitely be changed to this uh, in the future. Like, I would expect to see, like, an update patch. I mean, look, bear in mind, guys, they have already committed to an update patch in the near future before EOD. That could be a month, it could be two months, right? It could be three months, if we're getting a little bit depressed, right? But they have already committed to an update patch, so you're going to see this level of iteration across the board, and I'm really happy to see it. And then, yeah, finally, ah, oh, I, I really don't understand why they buffed Call of the Wild. This is already like a god tier ability in PvE, right? Like a very strong skill. It applies four boons when traded and gave unblockable at the same time with a short cooldown and a blast finisher as well. Like this is a very stacked skill. What they did to Call of the Wild is they actually um, added a daze and weakness, but removed the um, unblockable. And this obviously makes it better in PvP. Okay, um... You know, because Warhorn doesn't see much playing PvP, I guess. But it's it's so weird that they did this because it's already a very stacked skill, like a very stacked skill. I don't think that I would go about like trying to change um trying to change the Warhorn ability there. But they've now clarified that um it will not pluck off Clarion Bond. Clarion Bond is a, a trait. A, a it's the adept um adept major trait in marksmanship, and if you pet swap, it procs Clarion Bond. Obviously, pet swap doesn't really have an animation or a cast time, so this would essentially mean that if they followed through with the days, it would be an undodgeable days, essentially, right? Like, uh, you know... <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, where you can't really counterplay it because it's literally instant cast. There's nothing you can do about it, right? Because it's just, you know, no telegraph whatsoever. Maybe not the best idea. Though. So, yeah, they're just clarifying that it doesn't do that. It does still give weakness, by the way, okay? Like, it still gives weakness, which is not better... Okay, like, I, I I don't like this change overall, but, I mean, Warhorn is not really seeing play that much in PvP. But, to be fair, it will still actually give um, Base Ranger a little bit of a nice buff, because Base Ranger actually plays Clarion Bond, and this means you'll actually get additional weakness output, in addition to the weakness you get from your Axe as well, which will definitely help out Base Ranger a little bit in PvP. But, again, I'm not a huge fan of the design approach they have here with that trait there as well. Not great. Okay, not great at all. Yeah, they, I'm actually surprised they didn't buff up the quickness a little bit um, on the scrap. I guess they want to see how it plays out because I, I think that build will end up being probably a little undertuned. But I guess maybe they're just playing it a little bit safe. And yeah, it sucks that there's no world versus world changes here. Like nothing to about purity of purpose. But bear in mind, that is a time for another thing. This was very clearly, guys, like an open world and like high end raid tuning patch. This is not about PvP or world versus world. I would imagine that will be looked at in the future. But overall, I really want to say well done, Ana here. This is very, very good. The systems team is absolutely on the ball here. I am loving this communication from the developers. I am loving this action, like hot fixing these changes, get committing to future updates, getting it done, good design, and explaining and, and you know, reasoning um, their rationale here and communicating with us on the forums. So yeah, I have very little to say negative about this actually. Like, you know, again, I do, I don't agree with every change in the patch on a fundamental level, but I can understand what they're trying to do here, and I think that they're going to get the job done, and I'm really looking forward to what we see in the future from ArenaNet with regards to balancing their game. I think the future is very, very bright in terms of the skills design and kind of like overall freshness of the game. I'm expecting the systems team to start shaking some, some stuff up as soon as they can. Bear in mind, like, a lot of the stuff is going to be moving very slowly because, you know, They've, they've been developing elite specs. I imagine they're probably nearly done with that, and then they can, like, do a bit of a, a of a pass on the game just before the expansion. So, yeah, very, very hype. I mean, they better keep doing it in the expert, guys. I do not want to be playing, like, six months of busted specs. Please, no, let's not do that, right? Let's not go around again. Let's not go around again for, you know, Path of Fire V2. Please, no. But aside from that, yeah, 
I, I like it. Like, this is this is great. Like, well done uh, here to Aino. Like, this is exactly what I want to see. Obviously, we want more, and I want to see this push further, right? And, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pressure Aino. Like, Aino, yeah, give us more. Do this more. Keep doing it. Don't stop, right? Like, make more changes. Like, be a bit crazy. Like, let's get some real funky builds. You know, let's, I don't know, let's give Necromancer boons. You know, that would be a radical idea right there. You know, let, dude, I want it. Let's give Warriors, uh, you know, Warriors uh, all of a sudden, guys, okay? Uh, maybe we could give Hammer some damage back, okay? Maybe we could give it some damage. Damage. Maybe you can like, um, you know, you can pick up the banners and banner is now top DPS auto attack banner auto attack. Let's do some real crazy stuff. I don't mind. But hey, that's it. Like we'll see more of that in the future there. That's about it guys for the balance changes. There you go. That concludes that there from the system team. Until next time indeed, as they say in the post. Good stuff.